What's going on here then? Welcome to the world of Malcolm Noble's crime fiction. On air on 102.3 FM and online at www.harborfm.co.uk 102.3 HFM Across South Leicestershire and North Northamptonshire Moly Moly 102.3 HFM. Okay, it's that time of the day. It's just uh, 19 minutes to two on a Monday afternoon here on 102.3 HFM. And I'm joined by my special guest, uh, as I said, Mr. Melt Noble. I'm very honoured to have him here today in the studio. And uh, we're going to be talking to him about some of the mystery novels. Ten in all, he's, uh, he's actually wrote. Now then, Melk, um, I'm not going to ask you your age because that's rude, but how did you get into writing all these mystery novels? That's the first question. Okay, I'm 61, so it's, it's your being rude. Um, <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, I didn't think I, you were going to tell me that. I was laid up in a hotel room for three days mm. and uh, because I was poorly. Okay. It was overlooking Portsmouth Harbour and I just started to write about the harbour and that, that developed into the detective story. Oh, I see, I see. Because um, you were previously in the vo- in the force, weren't you, down I, there? I was in the police force for four years down there, okay. yeah. And, and many of the stories that the old coppers used to tell me I've mm. built into the novels, because mm. they're set in the 60s and mm. the 20s. Well, I know many, many years ago when uh, when I was in the, uh, another industry, we used to come in connection with some of the local policemen. I remember I was quite friendly with a, a sergeant, this is not, you know, yeah. and he, could, he was one of what I called the old-timers. Yeah. And he could tell a story, so I, I know where you're coming from with the with the interesting stories. You want to Absolutely. sit down and, and and chat and chat to him, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And that gave you that inspiration, did it? It did, yeah. and the, and the chatting and the yarns, of course, they don't get recorded like the official histories, do they? So, so that's the. But they have they, to be edited, of course, don't yeah, they? That, yes. That's the bit that needs okay. to be protected. Yeah. Right. Now, these um, s- um, novels that you've written, uh, original series of city murders, 37 to 67. Yes, uh, it's, it's the, the, most of them are set in the 60s, which is my okay. sort of era. Oh, okay. okay. Um, then I did a prequel in the 1947 and then went back to 1937. Wow. And the prequels were very, very popular. They're the ones that have gone out of print. Finding the, the sort of archives and the information to put this together, it must have been that must have been the most difficult. I mean, you can put obviously words to to, to, to yeah. writing in a book, but actually finding the archive it information. It, it's the small details that are difficult. I took a long time trying to find out how long a radio took to warm up in the 1940s before it started with the valves. Yeah, that sort of information is quite difficult to come by, and you yeah. really have we to. We forget dig about to, it, don't we? Yeah, yeah. you have yeah. to dig to find it. Yeah. But that's what makes the fun, Moldy. That's what. So, that's, yeah. that's why that's we it. do it. Okay, so the first one you did is um, was it? Is it a mystery of Crosswoman? Was that the first one? That's the 1937. Yeah, um, which, me, which yeah. Um, goes back to uh, the time when the 999 call was just introduced. And um, what did they do before that? Well, no, you just had a phoned, big stick. You just phoned your local police station, and maybe they answered, and maybe they didn't. You know, thank goodness. <laughs> we take it all for granted now, don't we? All we the modern do. technology. So that was uh, back in '37. Yeah, and the interesting thing about that is that the the policeman didn't think that 999 would last because they'd be given silly, silly little jobs to do rather than the main stuff. Well, that's the whole thing, isn't it? It's listening to what people tell exactly. you. Um, you know, I know one or two characters uh, here and around Harborough, and uh, I bet you could write a book or two about one or two of them, because they are <laughs> characters in their own right. Yeah. That excludes me, of course. But anyway, the, the whole thing about getting a book is you've got to make it interesting as well, isn't it? It's one chapter to another, and you've got... I'm not a big book reader, I'm sure you are, but one of the things I think is that you've got to be able to sort of realise that... If you read the first chapter, you can't put the book down. Exactly. You've got to make sure there's plenty of peaks. The basic thing is you have got to love the book yourself. Yeah. If you love what you're doing, yeah. someone else will love it. It's rather like making music, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's not everybody's taste, but if you love it, okay. someone out there will love it. Now, I know you've had quite a few re- reviews as well by a lot of the uh, papers and uh, one of them uh, by um, the Shropshire Star, I can mention that because it's not local to this area. Good fun and a fast, most enjoyable read. Yeah. How many chapters do you usually put in these novels? <laughs> um, a, a dozen. A dozen. 13, yeah. 14. So, what have you got, about 100 pages of it? Uh, they're about uh, 200, 
200 pages each. My goodness me. Yeah. That's a lot of words, isn't it? It's, uh, it's 60,000 of them, yes. <laughs> it's a lot of words. But, you know, it, you end up taking words out rather than putting them in. Right. So, the whole thing uh, about putting these together, you, you're creating that imaginary story. You've got to be creative to be an author, haven't you, to some degree. Is that right? Yeah, you've got to be... Um, I think you've got to be a little bit of an introvert, a bit of a daydreamer. Is it? You know, yeah. so, someone... You've also got to notice things. And, okay. And um, one of the things I like doing is listening to the strange remarks that people come up with, uh, especially if they're cross or they're a bit under stress. And you just pick up a phrase and you think, oh, yes, we can we can build on that. OK. Yeah. Do you often write, write things down? You know, if you're thinking about a novel or thing, do you, do you sort of think, well, I'll write that down and then I can use that for my next uh, my next novel? Exactly, yes. I always have a notebook with me. Do you really? Oh, yeah, making notes today <laughs> about this here. That's <laughs> what, you know. Um, anyway, but it's, it's just wonderful. Ten novels. I mean, that's over how many years? Uh, that's over ten years, yes. Yeah, yes, what a year. One, one a year. One a year. It takes about four months to write. Yeah. That's not saying that I could do three a year, because they're quite exhausting. Really. Do you sort of go in a, a sort of quiet room away from all, in, and get your imagination running away from you, and you write a few lines, and then you sort of add to it? And things I, like that? I've got my own particular way. I try and learn 600 words at a time, and when I know that I can recite 600 words, which is about a page and a half, Okay. I think, okay, if I can remember it, then it's got to be close to being right. Do you ever put something down and think, well, what was that I wrote? Oh, yes, all the, you know, time. Us, all the time. Well, I'll say us men, me particularly, I mean, I've got spidery doctors writing. I can't even read it myself, and yeah. anybody else, so, you know. Yeah. Yes, it, oh, all the time. Yeah? All the time, and it's frustrating. Yeah. You think, uh, what is that? What is it I wrote? Especially since if you're writing quickly, it's because it's good. And, of course, you come back next month and you, you, mm. can't, you can't decipher it. Uh, another one here. Marvellous creation. A noble reels off a first-rate story. Vastly entertaining. I mean, there's lovely comments by yeah. some of the, uh, uh, the various uh, Portsmouth Post there. was uh, created an intriguing set of characters and has a fine knack of description. Because that's the whole thing, isn't it? You read into the book and you sort of think, Hang on a minute. Yeah, this is real true to... I always, I, I always remember what Eric Clapton said. He said that practising the guitar is not about technique, it's about transferring what's from your head into your hands. OK. And writing's exactly the same. You've got to have a clear image in your head of what yeah. you're trying to get to. Now, the ten um, novels that you've actually done, and I know you're working on one at the moment, and you've got this talk coming up, which mm -hmm. is interesting. We'll, tell, we'll catch up on that in a little bit. These these books are they available from places like Waterstones? They're available, yeah. Amazon, Waterstones, wherever sells books. Uh, ebook? Are they available on ebook? One's well? on an ebook, which yeah. is uh, Mystery of Cross Women. Okay. Um, not a lover of ebooks. To be I, I'm going to say uh, that was my next question. Actually, yeah. going to ask you and say, how do you feel about ebook as against you being an author? Well, for, for me, being an author, I don't mind how people get to read the stories, yeah. you know. But um, it's, does it make an effect that people say, look, I want this in, in book form as against I'm, in e-form? I'm not feeling that at the moment. I guess in five years that will be an mm. issue, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's always going to be famous novels in, in books and things that are always going to be, uh, you know, readily people want to get their hands on because I understand now they don't actually do an encyclopedia only an e-book e do they? That's right yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's yeah. so much vast information. And encyclopedias are too heavy take up too much room. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. Have you got a lot of books? I've Because yeah. I bet if you're a book uh, you know you, I, if you read a lot of books I bet you, you've got a lot of books in your home. After years of negotiation I managed to get our front room transferred to the library. My goodness me. So I have in the front room about 3,000 books on shelves. Wow. Yeah. And I bet you've not read them all. I have dipped into them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just looking at some of the other um, series of those ones, we started off with the early one. Uh, liking good jazz, what's that all about? Um, I always said that the experience of liking good jazz, the first time you, 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 you hear it, you think it's great, and all the subsequent times, you're trying to catch that same feeling, but you never do. And so it was built around this this... Uh, concept of trying to recapture old pleasures that you never can because okay you know it's a bit like hearing stacks isn't it you know the old record label the first yeah. time you hear it the soul music it was fantastic but you never experience it again quite that way absolutely so it's first child just uh, catching on a, a couple of other one that uh, the case of the naughty wife and the poisons of the good ladies road 
The case of the naughty wife was originally it's a Glenn Miller novel. Okay. It, it was originally called um, the Twinwood Trombone. Um, that being the airfield that he flew from. It's not what you think, actually. Mm. You know, when you read the case misleading of the novel, title, it's a, it's a misleading title. You have yeah. to take responsibility for what you make of it. Okay. And uh, just the other one there, we're saying the uh, the poisons of the Good Ladies Road. What's that all about? Yeah, Good Ladies Road is where they're all set, a back street inspired or based in Portsmouth, although I've altered the geography. And the poisons, of course, is the poisons that can kill someone, but also the gossip. That's, you know, when we talked about earlier about that one back in 37, yeah. that must have been a bit of a challenge for you. Yeah. The, the, the howler that I'm always remembered for is I, had, I wrote a book in 47, and I had the chap drinking from paper clubs in Waterloo Station, whereas, of course, in 1947, it would have been out of crockery. Yeah. Yeah. People have never let me forget that. Okay. And, yeah. You got caught then, did I you? I got caught. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's been lovely having you here today, it's and been I know. Great to be yeah. Uh, it's, it's great to have a, a, an author because you, you're very different people. I've had quite a few authors wow. here and then, and uh, you know, it's, I can see your imaginations running away with you. And the next thing, you might be doing a story about HFM on it in a book. <laughs> you know, who knows? We've got a film, so you know. You, well, there we go. Uh, there we are on the starting point. Now, the Odeby Library, the 18th of April, 6 p.m. You're uh, you're there, and you're, you're going to be doing a bit of a chat. Uh, certainly am. Uh, it, it's a return visit. The last time I went, it was a, a very lively audience. They know this stuff. Did, did I have to put up with you for sort of right, talking for a bit of sort of stories and things? And do they interrupt you? I'm afraid you? they will. Although they'll interrupt me. They Absolutely, will, they say. will interrupt yeah, me. Yes. Okay. yes. I mean, and good stuff. I mean, what they say is more intelligent than what I say. Oh, well, I'm doing <laughs> about that. But I mean, one of the things is, uh, you know, I've done one or two talks for things about radio and that. And you know, I remember going some 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 months ago, uh, Nick caught me into this and it was a, a local organisation it was all ladies you know right. there was about 50 odd ladies yeah. but there were more senior ladies and they looked at me and they said look you know I'm going to do a chat about HFM and they said oh right okay I said I don't want you falling asleep otherwise I'm going to bang the table <laughs> and that broke the ice and yes. they all listened yeah. intently so it was good now do you, have you have you got another one on the on the go at the moment I have I've got one coming out the 1st of August um, murder in a parish chest Oh my and goodness the, me. And the next one's cooking. <laughs> Crikey. Man, it never ends, does it? Mel, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, good, good luck on the 18th of April, 6pm there at the parade in Odeby. Don't forget, go along there and uh, it'd be an interesting chat with, uh, with our um, guest today. Anyway, I wish it's you all the great fun, Murray. Thank Thanks you very so. much indeed. On air on 102.3 FM and online at www.harborfm.co.uk. 102.3 HFM. Across South Leicestershire and North Northamptonshire. Moly. Moly. 102.3 HFM. HFM.